Hi everybody, it's Marshall from Terry's Arnorama, Nashville. I have finished doing the Grisai painting, the gray underpainting that we're going to be doing this demonstration with. What I'm going to do now is switch over from acrylic to oil, water base to oil base. The reason being is that oil has a deeper kind of a uh, finish. It seems to have depth to it and a glow to it that is really hard to achieve in acrylic oil paint just by, it, by its nature because it's oil. It just takes a lot longer to dry. Because we're working in glaze, it's not going to take as long because it's going to be thinner layers of paint and so it'll set up and I'll be able to come back and do the final details on this painting and call it a done deal. The materials I'm working on in this job are a Da Vinci thinner container. This is where I'll be washing my brushes in and holding the thinner that I use to do the work. The thinner that I'm using is Gamsol thinner and the reason I like Gamsol is because it really is the least stinky thinner out there and uh, why not? The mediums that I'm using, they are the uh, liquid mediums. There's regular liquid, which is pretty thick, pretty gel-like, and it will stay where I put it and not run down the canvas. If this is too thick for what I'm doing, I'm gonna be working with liquid light gel, which is just a thinner version of the same kind of thing. And uh, I'll tell you the truth, people, I am an acrylic painter. I've spent my whole life working in acrylic. I have worked in oil, but not a ton. And this is a chance for me to try some things that I've never done before. So I'm experimenting as much as uh, some of you might be too. Uh, this is going to be interesting to see how this works out. I'm also, using, I'm also using a Soho acrylic and oil paper palette. This way I can just open it up and I have sheets of palette paper and when I get done, with the whole project, I can take the oil and just rip it off, crinkle it up and throw it away. So I don't have to worry about the scent, the smell uh, of oil paint. Uh, I'm so not used to it. I do like the smell, but I don't want it all the time. So I want to be careful about that. Rather than keeping a palette here, because I don't work in oil all the time, I want to be able to just throw it away. And I thought this is going to be the best solution for me this time. I'm also working with Lucas 1862 paints. Now, Lucas, the brand name, comes from Europe. It's been around since 1862, which is when they when they came together. And this oil paint is as good as there is on the market. But we're one of the only people that carry it in America, and it really is one of the top brands. We stand by it. Jerry's is is very happy with using this as uh, one of our one of our market brands. Also, I will be painting with a Polar Flow wash brush. I'm using these nylon brushes. They have a nice soft bristle and they're not too expensive. I can get a nice soft blending flow with these without having to spend an arm and a leg for natural hair bristles. I'm also using, these are my second favorite brushes in the whole Jerry's line. I'm using Ebony Splendor. These are softer bristles than the staccato I use to lay these in there. They're not quite as stiff, but they're a little finer and a little smoother, and I can do a smoother blend without as much streaks of a stiffer bristle. So I can lay on a softer glaze with these, and these are really a wonderful line. Until the staccato line came out, these were my babies. These are the ones I always went to, and I will still always work with these because they are really a beautiful line of brushes for acrylic painting. And now I'm going to find out how they work with oil. Since, since I'm also an amateur at uh, doing oils, I set up my palette the way I think it's going to work. I'm going to show you that and uh, you can use that as reference for the work that you do. I have the oil set out like that and I have them all in a spectrum so I know exactly which colors I have and how they work with each other. I have my pad set up and I put out a little bit of the oils all the way across one edge so I see my whole spectrum of oils that I can work with. In the cup I have the light gel, a Winsor Newton light gel medium so that I have a thicker body of gel to work with. I decided that the other gel, uh, the regular liquid, seemed a little bit thick for me for doing just uh, glaze work. 
So I thought I would go ahead and use the light gel this time. There are my brushes and my thinner is set up right there. So now I'm completely set up to begin this painting. using the oils I can go ahead and glaze just single colors on there but I can also shift my colors as I'm working so in this shadow I added a little bit more deeper color so it's a little bit of uh, yellow ochre and a little bit of uh, uh, a brown in there just to get it a little bit more shadowy and then I made it more transparent so around here I'm gonna even add a little backlight in blue on the, uh, on the original uh, pair that we started painting, I left it here so there is a, what appears to be like a little bluish background. And I'm gonna highlight that a little more later when I get into the details. But at this point, I've got just a nice soft hair colored uh, uh, yellow happening on there. An orange and an apple. I mean, it's on the apple that I'm sitting here working on and I'm thinking, wow, I can really add a lot of color in and out because of oil not drying on me. I'm so used to acrylic drying on me that I didn't realize that I can go ahead and leave it here and in a minute later I can come along and I can make highlights just a little bit brighter just by taking off a little bit even with my finger or using the brush when it is uh, uh, cleaned that I can actually take off some of this paint and it hasn't dried yet enough so I can go ahead and model it just a little bit real softly even with my finger but it's got this vibrant color happening in a rich and deep color that I really like the feel of it's something I've seen in Renaissance paintings in the past and uh, I, I've always been attracted to this look and I think it's really fun because I can take my structure and build it out in black and white. So I'm only concentrating on structure, the structure of the light and dark, the light and shadow, and the structure of the actual shapes that I'm working on. And I don't have to think about color at the same time. This way I can finish it so I get all my values where I want, my, my composition where I want, and then once it's all dry in grays, I'm coming back with color and putting it together. And all I'm thinking about at this point is just getting the color on there. And this is really a pleasant way to work. Here we are at this point. I've laid down a uh, glaze all the way across. It's a variety of colors, but they're still not quite as much as I want. I want to get a little richer color in here. So I'm going to let this set up for a while, and then I'll be able to come back and do more glazes on top to bring out even more color. I think this is a really exciting process, and I'm having a blast. I hope you are too. I've had a chance to let this painting sit for a little bit and dry so I can get a second coat on the glaze. So let's get started.
painting like this forever, just trying to get in all the details and all the highlights and everything. But I think for the sake of this demonstration, we're going to call this one done. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have. I got to tell you, working in oil has really been a pleasure for me and I can't wait to spend more time doing this kind of work. Thanks for joining us. Oh, 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 oh,